Okay, I must handle this one with care. So here's what we got today. You know I'm excited about this one. People have been really hyped for this cube lately and asking me, you know, where's your review on it? And I was asking the same thing. The shipping company was like taking over a month. It probably has something to do with like pandemic restrictions and crossing a border. So I just asked Speedcube Shop to send it to me again and here it finally is. They got a bit too excited with the lube and let's get started. Whoa, what the heck? I was completely not expecting this. This is, this is really, really smooth. It is also super quiet and I love that. I love when cubes are quiet. Maybe a little tight right now, but it feels really good. Uh oh. All right, here, listen to this and listen to this. I can't tell right off the bat which one is quieter, but it's similar to the quietest cube. This also feels really stable and reminds me of a GAN cube. Right now, the corner cutting is a little bit tough even at 45. If we go even more than that, it's like, it's unreasonable to cut that in a real solve because of how difficult it is. Let's try some reverse corner cutting. Oh yeah, that's that's really tough. So that's kind of what I was feeling as I was doing my initial turns. And I think if I just make this a little bit looser, it probably would be okay. What the? Okay, wow. I don't remember Chi Yi or X-Man having any core adjustment system in any previous cubes. So I'm glad they have one now, but I don't wanna learn a new one every single cube. I kind of wish they just all had the same one. Okay, we're gonna open this box and dive into how this works. Wow, this bag is not made of felt like the usual ones. I, I don't know what to call it, but it's like, I don't know what jackets are made of. There is some other stuff, including a cleaning cloth, but this one tells you how everything works. <sighs> Hope you can read Chinese. So there's a magnet adjustment system and a dual adjustment system. The magnets are probably fine for now. I'll go on to the stuff in the core and they actually show you a diagram of what it would look like in every setting. I don't think you actually have to use this, but if you were ever unsure, you could look here to see what settings you have. Adjust axis distance. This is probably the same as the screw and then adjust spring tension. Of course, that's the spring compression. What's really cool is these actually use the same tool in the same way. It's just that for one of them, you turn counterclockwise and the other one you turn clockwise. This is the only tool. I assume there must be something in the back here. Ooh, that's magnetic. And I'll take this two thing. I'm going to call this the beetle tool. So let's start with the number inside the circle, which is three. And you can turn this counterclockwise in order to change it. So we're going to do that. And now it is on four. The number inside the circle tells you the axis distance or how far apart this can be pulled. In other words, just the tightness of the cube. And you really wanna think tightness, not looseness, as five. The highest number is going to be the tightest setting. Now the numbers on the outside control the springs and how you wanna see which setting you're on is by looking at the little notch in the centerpiece right here. So you can see there's a gap right there where I can see the number three. When you turn clockwise, it changes this. So now we are on four. And again, we're looking at the bottom right here. If you looked from a different side, you wouldn't see it. So you have to adjust it from this side. This controls the tightness of the springs. So if I went to five, then this would be the tightest springs, or in other words, the most stable, but least flexible. And as you do that, you can see the number in the circle hasn't changed. So remember inside the circle for the axis distance and outside the circle for spring compression. Even after having explained it, I always forget things. So just remember if you are using this for yourself, just go check how to do it here. <laughs> All right, everything's on two. The springs and the distance everything can move should be a little bit looser and let's check corner cutting again. Uh, it's still kind of difficult. I'm not sure if it felt any easier. Let's try some turns. Okay, this is, changing to two and two definitely made things feel a lot looser. It is not nearly as stable as how it felt right at the start. I could maybe just change one of those settings instead and I could have gotten a better result. Um, this does feel a little bit too loose for me right now. I'm messing up a lot. 
All right, it's back on 3.3 now. It still feels a little bit tight and I'll have to work more with trying to find the right setting. And there are the magnets as well. So let's get into that. So I will switch over to the flathead. The magnets are definitely a much more straightforward system. So right here, this symbol is a plus for more magnet strength. And this is a minus for less magnet strength. And there are five settings in total. Right now, this is pointed at the middle setting. I'm gonna go with, uh, let's go one magnet setting weaker. Okay, that didn't make a sound at all, but it definitely changed the setting. And when you change one side, it does not change the opposite side, so you'll have to do this 24 times. Now it's on a slightly weaker magnet setting. Um, it's definitely lost a bit of its stability, so I'm having a bit of trouble not being used to this, but it is a bit faster and that may be better in the long run. And when I have a full review of this, I will have tested a lot of the settings and I'll find my favorites. Now this is the GAN Smart Timer. I hope it's smart enough to tell me what's wrong with my solves. Wow, looking pretty sleek GAN as always. All right, let's see how this works. Let's turn it on. Um... Wow, it gets all blue. Maybe that's why it takes four batteries. <laughs> no, but that's probably for the Bluetooth thing. It looks like it's searching for a Bluetooth connection. I wonder if I can turn that off or the battery might just get drained. Okay, but first let's do some solves on this. All right, I read the instructions. It turns out that's not a reset button. This is the reset button, which is kind of confusing, but I don't know if that's easy to remember. There we go, now we can start. All right, so this is the reset button and this is the average of five button. So what this button does is it cycles through your average of five. If I press this, it shows me the last time I got with a little one at the bottom. And then this is the second last time I got and I haven't done more than two times here. And at the end, it'll tell me what my average of five is which is zero because I haven't done anything yet, but I will do five solves and let's see if it works. One thing I've noticed lately is whenever we get to this part of the video and I do solves, they're usually not very good at all. And I think I've realized the reason is because I'm holding the cube over here, which may look normal for you guys, but there's the whole camera in the way and everything. And how I usually hold the cube is not here, not here, not here, not here, but even one step closer. So the view of the cube I get is completely different and for some reason I just can't solve well here. Well, this is a good scramble, so what do I have to complain about? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> See what I mean. All right, I've done an average of five on this and you can see solve one or the latest solve was 9.79. So this is actually in reverse order because it's showing me my most recent one first. And the one I got uh, before that was 11 and then nine and eight and nine. But this one was a plus two. I couldn't figure out how to put a plus two on here. Then if we go to the very end, it says, a05, average of five, and it tells me my average is 9.59. And going back to the X-Man Tornado V2 for a second, I feel like I should explain myself with these times. Um, I think if you watch them, it's pretty self-explanatory. This is not how I turn at all. This is completely me not being confident in this cube. And yeah, I'm not used to it, but also it does feel very strange where I can't really turn accurately. So I've just kind of slowed down, but I still can't turn accurately. And that's why the times here are not very good the scrambles were actually good. So this goes to show how big of a difference I feel between this and my usual main. I will try and get used to it, of course, but this is uh, not looking so good. I don't find this average of five functionality to be super important, but I do think it has one good use and that's when you're at a competition and practicing with a stack mat timer, but you also wanna simulate a competition. For example, having a friend scramble it for you, and then when the cube comes back, it gets covered like in a normal competition and then you say ready and the whole 15 seconds of inspection and everything. I think that's good because it just helps you not have to write down your times and calculate at the end where you have it right here. That's the only situation I can think of. Other than that, I don't think that average of five thing is super important because you'll most likely be recording yourselves in some other way. But of course there is the app, which this is still searching for. Let's just turn that off. Okay guys, after I downloaded the app and also of course took a quick look at that 2.9 average rating, here was my live reaction to what I saw in the app. Wait, I thought I just downloaded it. Why does it need to install updates? Oh, why is it so slow? This is, this is really slow, right? Oh no, I have a video to film. I can't be waiting for this. So, you know, I thought to myself, 
Uh, I'll just leave this running. Um, I'll go do something else and wait for it to finish updating. But then I forgot about it, used my phone for a bit, and then here's what I saw. It lost connection. Wonderful. I think it should be working now. Okay, nice. It's not restarting. I was scared it would do that. But, okay, it's not moving. Wait, is it- is it not going to move? It's- it's actually not moving! Wow, at this rate, I don't think I can even download this update. Look, it's actually- it's actually not moving. The connection should be working, but it's just not downloading anything. Alright, it's me from the future. Let's just fast forward through this. Yep, it never moved. I will try to run this overnight, because that's how long I think it's gonna take. But, uh, for now, let's get back to the unboxing. This is a Speedcube Shop timer skin, so I'm gonna try this out, and if it looks nice, like the concept, then maybe I'll be able to get a custom JPerm skin. Wow, this one's called Gamer Skin. <laughs> if it really was a gamer's skin, it would be covered in G Fuel and Doritos. I haven't stickered a cube in a long time, so let's see if I still have it in me. So this will just go right here. Hmm, it appears that the size is slightly off. It's a little bit too small, so I... Don't know about hugging the side completely. Maybe I'll just put it slightly in the middle because um, I don't know like at this point It's not perfect. So I am trying to make a compromise <laughs> That's not good. So clearly these are not the right size right now And I don't know if maybe I shouldn't have put it right in the middle of the pad Maybe I should have like scooched it down a little bit that way it could cover this part and that's the main part you look at but what's done is done and there is the blue border around it from the original and that is a sizable gap so i would say this definitely needs some work but now i'm going to add the center i just want to see in concept if this looks nice and if so then i'm really excited because it doesn't matter that this one isn't perfect i eventually want this the middle one looks like this so everything is covered except for the display so the two lights when you start the timer and also this display here Maybe I could have applied this one a little bit better, but it definitely fits. There is one little issue, I don't know what that black streak is over the save word, but yeah, this fits okay. The sides don't fit too well, but as a concept, I think this looks pretty nice. Let's just test everything about the timer and stop and reset. Yep, everything still works. Um, I don't even use these two buttons, I don't know what they do, but I'm... I'm sure, I'm sure they still work. Oh, and there's also this one, which goes on the back. Now, not this back, but this back. So there it is. There weren't any lines to follow on the back, so I kind of just had to eyeball it, but I think I got it right in the middle. And looking at it now, like if you just, if you just squint your eyes for a second so you don't see the parts where it's not completely accurate, this looks pretty sick. I actually think timer skins are the future of making your timer look different. My full review of this, of course, is to get these to fit better. And I think the one at the back looks pretty nice already. It's a good size. I think these buttons could be more straightforward. I think they're going for some kind of black and white gradients, but without it, it would probably look better. And the last thing I think is to keep the black border around the number display. So there originally is a black border here, but now it's gone because it's just covered. Either change the size of this hole so that the black border stays, or just put a black border on the sticker itself. Other than that, this looks great, and uh, I'm excited to see what kind of designs there will be in the future. And I especially like the view from the back. I love that there's a sticker here. Oh, and I uh, don't have another stack mat timer, so I guess this is just the one you'll be seeing in my videos from now on. Next, we have the Maylong 13x13, which is now, I think, the biggest cube that I own. Oh wow, this is heavy. <laughs> Although, not as heavy as I expected. Did I just think the number 13 was smaller or something? This feels like a lot more than 13, but I'm not gonna count. It's definitely 13. Okay, let's, let's try some turning. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm gonna try every layer. It's, I really doubt it's magnetic. It's probably not. So the layers are gonna get misaligned a lot. And that means I really have to hold down all the layers. I'm not turning as I turn, which is probably fine because trying to go any faster and more optimal would just be too risky and that would not be worth it. What? What algorithm am I doing? Oh, that's not even a J perm. Yeah, actually holding it in the air just doesn't seem like the right play unless I'm holding it like this so that I can hold exactly the layers I'm not turning. This is so weird. Uh, let's see if this works out though. 
Uh, yeah, th this was actually not bad. This cube turns really well. It looks like I'm just getting what I'm intending and I'm going slow, but like when you're turning a gigantic cube, usually what you intend to do doesn't happen. I actually have a full video of me solving the 10 by 10 cube, and there are a few differences and things I want to talk about. One difference is this is an odd numbered cube because there are 13 layers, which means there is one middle layer. And when there is a middle layer, I find that these cubes tend to be a little bit more stable and easier to turn. Maybe I can just start making the checkerboard pattern as I talk, because that would probably look really nice. So as I'm making this, I want you guys to guess because I'm going to do a full solve of this. And just a reminder, for 10 by 10, it took me 25 minutes. So I'm wondering what you guys think it will take me to solve this. Because on a 10 by 10, a lot of you guys guess like two hours just because it's a big cube. Oh, I messed up. Um, but then a lot of you guys also guess like 10 minutes because of my 7 by 7 times. And like, yeah, that's kind of reasonable but at the same time, like it's way harder to turn. And the 13 by 13 is kind of in a different spot because I think it actually is in some ways easier to turn than the 10 by 10. I think I make fewer mistakes, but it's also way bigger. So maybe it's gonna be just as hard. Um, and I want you guys to guess how long you think it'll take me to solve this. Um, and after you leave a comment with your guess, um, I'm now also going to guess how long I think it will take me. I think it'll take me about 50 minutes. That's my guess. But I'm not gonna have a solve of this in this video because obviously that would make this video too long. Um, I just wanna look at some nice patterns on this. Now that I think about it, just making the checkerboard pattern actually took a long time. Um, I'm not gonna undo it right now. I'm just gonna, let's just swap the centers around, see if that looks any bit nice. I could do a cube in a cube pattern like all the way down for all the layers but I remember doing that once and that took so long. So I'm not gonna do it again for a 13 by 13. If you wanna see that video, just go watch that one. In preparation for the full solve, I should just start scrambling it. Let me just tell you guys, if you do the checkerboard pattern or just like turn every layer once before you start scrambling, it actually makes the blocks of pieces go away faster. And normally how you'd start a solve is with blocks of pieces. So it just makes it so that the scramble becomes as hard as it has to be without you having to do as many turns and break as many blocks because that's kind of the most annoying part about scrambling the big cube is just how long it takes and how much you actually have to think about trying to make things scrambled because often uh, it just won't be. Even if you look at just a seven by seven scramble, like the official scrambles, these are really long. And at a competition, it's so hard to make these accurate that uh, there's a rule saying you don't have to. All right, I think this is sufficiently scrambled. It looks really fun. It's so colorful. This is this is why I love cubing. Well, at least that's what I tell myself because if I can't turn fast and have to be doing stuff like this, at least I have colors to look at. This will be torture for another day. Okay, in the end, I did make it into the app and I managed to connect the timer through Bluetooth, but I could not figure out how anything works in this app. It seems like a lot of the functionality requires a smart cube and the timer is like just one little part of it. I don't know what it's supposed to be able to do. Everything is just very unclear. I tried a lot of the buttons, including anything that has to do with a timer and non-smart cube, and it never gave me anything. Like I even tried using the timer to record some times while having this page loaded that shows the times you've gotten and they just never show up. So I don't know how it's supposed to work and there are no instructions. And plus this is really annoying to use because nothing is clear at all. And a lot of the times the buttons just don't work or like I don't know what they're supposed to do because I just click it and nothing happens. A lot of it seems to be about setting up a room to match with other people and race them, but I think this is probably for Smart Cube, or even if it's for non-Smart Cube, there are no rooms, so I couldn't just randomly go against somebody else to test this. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. It's just a timer connected to an app. Like the most it could do is just record my times, which I can already do with like any timer. I gotta say though, one redeeming quality about this app is Felix is looking fine. Thank you to Speedcube Shop for sending me all of these puzzles, and if you want to buy anything I mentioned, then check the link in the description and make sure to use the discount code JPERM. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.